Hi, all. Today we are mainly focusing on the QA part, like question and uh, answers that you are expecting, your doubts and those things can be covered today. So it will help you out to sort out your doubts and uh, those confusions that you have so that uh, it will be like the agenda will be mainly on the topics that you guys bring into this context so that we will discuss on that and then we'll clarify those things today. So this today it will not be a, as much as lengthy session that we have normally, but it is like mainly focusing on your uh, kind of like your doubts and all. So uh, yeah, for that actually, uh, it's completely the four will be yours. So what whatever you have your doubts and all, you can just ask so that I can uh, share my experiences as well as my context and my views on that so that uh, it will help out you in solving issues. Solving issues in the sense, yeah, why we are using cloud and DevOps? It's it's something to definitely it is for solving out some kind of problems, right? Maybe getting some kind of easier solutions or a better solutions than the current one, right? So that's why I call it as a problem. So yeah, uh, yes, we can um, go ahead with that. So um, before just uh, starting up, I just wanted to know like, uh, do you guys just do a hands-on on what we have in our last sessions. Yeah, yes, sir. I have done a few hands uh, hands-on. Um, hmm. Of course, like um, uh, I tried to like uh, create a virtual machine. Hmm. That I mean, as it was the first uh, session we had, and then hmm. after that, um, I have uh, uh, access these uh, second subnet to virtual machine through the RDP and all, and also I have done the past and part and all but in terms of load balancer i'm i mean i'm a bit confused in the load balancing thing mm. and uh, apart from this all like the last in, in the last session as we uh, uh, as we have uh, uh, created the nsg right so mm -hmm. uh, while uh, creating a vnet um, mm. i have experienced that uh, i couldn't find any NSG like uh, uh, created by the uh, created by the default itself. So mm -hmm. um, that's the uh, main thing I, I want to ask. Like like you said that it would be created by default, right? So yeah, I okay, okay. Find it. Uh, yeah, there's one option yeah. there actually. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll. And I'll... also, okay. And also, sir, um, I have a question that, um. I mean, we all know that NSG would imply on subnets, right? So yeah. uh, I have a question that can we also like imply that NSG on uh, virtual machine as well? Um, yeah, first of all, your, yeah, I'll answer to your latest question. So NSGs can be attached, can be associated either with the sub subnets or with the NICs, okay, network interface card. Okay, we can't directly associate an NSG, which means a network security group <clears throat> to a VNet. But for example, if we need to associate, or we need to like add one NSG to an entire network, an entire VNet, what we have to do is, if we have multiple subnets available in that VNet, we need to associate it with. That's what we can do. Okay, so there are two levels. One is subnet level, and the other is that uh, network interface card, NIC level. So both level we can apply. If it is a NIC card level, then yeah, definitely, if we have a VM or something, definitely we have a 
the card available so that we can associate with that resource. And uh, if you have multiple subnets, we can associate with that. Uh, we can't associate an NSGs directly to VNet because VNet is something like a logical segregation of networks, right? So if we have multiple subnets inside that, definitely we can associate with those subnets, but we can't uh, directly associate it with that uh, whole address space that we have with our VNet virtual networks, yeah. Okay. So for the subnet, uh, uh, I mean, the last session we have associated on the subnet, right? But, yeah, uh, yes, 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 uh, yes, I'm yeah. Just, I'm just, yeah, I'm just curious that um, mm -hmm. how can we uh, associate uh, associate it on NIC, like NIC card? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, do that. I'll explain that today. So, yeah, I'll, I'll okay. give you another lab. Okay. So, yeah, that's, I, I noted it. You can have that okay. uh, because uh, that load balance uh, section as well as this NSG you need to understand, right? That's what, that's where you are lagging. That's what you are, that's what I'm understanding, correct? Yes, sir, because I've uh, tried to create it, but, create it, but, you know, face some difficulty, so that's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, that's also fine. I'm happy to help you on that actually. And uh, any other concerns like any, uh, so far we covered the other things now. Do you have any on that also? That no, sir, apart from that, no, I have, I mean, I have completely understand and had a an, hands-on and passion and mm -hmm. uh, uh, like, uh, I mean, the, the peering part as well. So, so far, mm -hmm. no, uh, I mean, no doubts in that, but only on the load balancer thing and mm. on the NSC thing. That's it. Obviously, obviously. Yeah, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, I got your concern. Definitely, yeah, we will address it today itself. Okay, with the help of some labs so that uh, I can explain things and then just shoot your questions if you have, like, still you have any doubts or more clarification is needed, okay? Okay. Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. So, yeah, let me bring in some pictures. Give me a minute, let me take. I hope you are able to see my screen. Yeah, yes, it can be seen. Yeah, okay, okay. Cool. First of all, I answered your one query, like whether we can associate an NSG to a VNet. And I said, no, answer is no, we can't. We can associate it either with subnet, this is a subnet, right? So in this picture, this is a virtual network. We can't directly attach an NSG over here, which means we can't attach it on a way net, but little bit in a granular level, we can attach it, attach it with subnet. For example, here we have NSG1, which is attached with the subnet one. We don't have any NSGs attached in subnet two and subnet three as well. 
and also we have NSC2 which is attached to NIC, sorry, NSG2 which is attached to the NIC card one. So that's why like VM1 and VM2, both are resources, right? So both have uh, same NIC cards, okay, same NIC cards. And uh, to this NIC card, this NSGs are attached. So that's by default, VM3 have one NSG2, like one kind of uh, firewall kind of thing. Yeah, definitely a layer that uh, filtering the traffic. And uh, for VM2 as well, yeah, there is one. But since they don't have any NSGs attached to the NIC, it, there is one NSG attached to the subnet level. So that is applicable to VM2. VM1 actually, and I see one is there, so there will be two, one from subnet and the other from this NIC card level. So that's why here we have two NSCs available. And uh, yeah, we can add uh, multiple NIC cards to a resource so that we can attach another NSC as well to this resources according to our requirement. Okay. So what I'll do now, first of all, I'll be yeah creating yeah I'll be bringing uh, another picture. Um yeah. Are you able to see my this this is fine, right? You are able to read those, right? Yeah, yes, this is okay, okay, readable. Cool. So I'll I'll bring you through this uh, example. So what we will do, right? Yeah, in this lab, we will have a subscription and uh, resource group as well. So we will create a VNet with this under space. And uh, we will create uh, one subnet with this range and another subnet with this range. And uh, we will be creating two servers, okay, and one load balancer. So, yeah, definitely, since it's a public one, it needs a public IP. I will call it as pub IP. Okay. What I will do is initially I'll assign public IP to these two also. Okay. And uh, I'll show how it is working. After that, like uh, we can make it as like before and after load balancer, like that kind of things that we can have. So what I will do is I do have these two servers. I'll install some server kind of things and I'll provision a web page over there so that we can be able to access it over internet. And then we'll try to bring a load balancer in between. Okay. So here we are able to, like we'll be accessing that using laptop or desktop or other, or, a, or any smartphone or something. You have a laptop okay, or anything with you? Yeah, yes, sir, I have. Okay, okay, yeah. And, and be ready with that so that you can also test from your side. Like uh, when I'm giving that IP you now, you can also try it from your end, whether it's working, how it's how you are getting that, that we can take it. So our our uh, idea is pretty clear. First of all, we will the first step is will be creating a VNet. 
then step is like we will be creating this uh, subnets. Then what we'll do with the inside, we will create one server. Next step, we will create another server. And then, uh, yeah, while we're creating these servers, definitely we will have public IP attached. Why, why this? Because to, to understand the differences actually, that's why we are attaching public IP. So we will attach public IP to, I will call it as public IP1, public IP2, public IP, and we will call it like this. Okay. And uh, after this, then we will go for Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, this is the Azure portal as we know. What all things we created, everything is a resource for Azure, definitely. So here what I will do is I'll be concentrating mainly on Linux machines, okay? So that uh, in the last session, actually, the previous section, we mainly focused on Windows machines. So we just created, like with the help of IAS servers, we just created web servers and then did those configurations. Today, we will handle it with the next servers. It's also pretty much easy to do that. So first of all, as I said, we'll be creating virtual network. We can either create virtual network along with this creation of VM, but it's better to create separately because you will get an idea like how it is creating, what are components are there and all. Otherwise, we can create VNet along with the creation of VM as well because we will be getting fields there. There's an option to create uh, these things. So that's also possible. Okay. So VNet. Okay. I'm giving some names here, Vnet. Test 001. So the look, make sure that the that, uh, region is, is US, okay? And I'm just mentioning this address space. What's address space that we are mentioning? 192.160.10. 8.168.10.0 slash, what was that? Uh, okay, slash 24. Not a pretty big, much big one. Okay, but this is enough for us. And I'm deleting this because this is the another like default subnet. I'm not using that for now. I'll be attaching, I'll be using two subnets. So here we do have two subnets, right? One is management subnet, 192G management subnet. Yeah, we can call it that in different uh, ways, that's fine. I'm just in, making a management subnet here too. As you know, right? Uh, we can bring some gem server, means bash and host or something over there and we can easily manage that. That's why I'm bringing this subnet over here. Definitely for this lab, actually, we don't have any task related to this management subnet, but yeah, I'm just creating as a standard. Uh, what will be starting at 10.0 slash 28. Okay. okay, that's fine. Then I'm just adding, I'll be adding another subnet as well. What was the subnet name? It was server subnet, okay. Server subnet. And address uh, should be 10.16. Cool. So I do have two subnets available. This is my address space. Total 256 addresses can be attached. Yeah. So in that, I do have two subnets as well. Then next, it's validating. Great. Okay. 
vnet is created good just verifying file subnets are available yeah fine so that's fine i'm creating virtual machines I'm selecting a source load, VM, server, zip zero one, is DS. I'm not going with any availability zone. Yeah, I'm selecting Ubuntu server. And I'm going with uh, username and password for now. Yeah, we can go with either public key or password. We need to use with public key. Yeah, you know, we need to pass that public key along with that. For reasons I'll be doing with the uh, name and password. And for now, I'm only allowing 22 port, which is for SSH to manage the server. I'm only going with the standard at SSH sorry, HDD for now, because that is like, that's fine for me, it says testing. And here virtual network, yeah, I'll be selecting the subnet and then I'll be creating a public IP, so pub IP server one, and here, yeah, here we have a question. And NIC, okay, network security group, which is like a network security group contains security routes that allow or deny inbound network traffic or outbound traffic, right? The virtual machine to simplify management security rules, it's recommended that you associate a network security group to individual subnets rather than individual network interface within the subnet whenever possible. So do you get that point? What Azure is recommending is, if you are, it is recommended to have NSGs like NSG1 than NSG2, that's what Azure is recommending. So try to apply NSGs along with, associate with the uh, subnets, not with NICCAD, but NICCAD is also possible, but if you, like you are, Architecture is recommending you to create NSGs on subnet level, go for it. If not, then go with an IC. Do you get that? Yes, sir. But can we go with both, like uh, subnet level and a card level? Definitely, definitely. That's what you are uh, seeing here, right? For VM1, yes. we do have two. NSG2 is for, with associated with yeah nick uh, card NIC level but nsc one is what it sub is network. subnet level they are correct so that's also fine so i'm currently opening ssh port only okay here we can decide which all port need to be opened so i am just uh, putting basic over here and then so if we put none it will not create a nick card sorry it will not create network security group which is attached to a NIC card okay but i am putting this basics that's why it will create if you select none then it will not create okay okay and if we but, have a, but in general yeah in gen in general like we'll allow we all will always allow like the NIC card right yeah generally yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Uh, it is recommended, mainly recommended to associate network security group with subnets. But if we like, if you are in a situation like you need an NSC for your NIC card, then you can select this. Otherwise, if you need a NSC in subnet level, you can click no, because that will also override no. 
Here, if you see, we, we have NSG2 with NIC, which is overrated by NSG1, right? So if we have NSG1, yeah, we can have an NSG2 or not. That's up to us. OK. It's, uh, it's completely up to us, actually. Okay, so let I'm going ahead, nothing else. Yeah, also try to create uh, by review and create. VM server 001 is US. Is to a subnet is server subnet public IP server. Okay, okay, all good, all good. I'm creating. Same way, I'll be creating another VM as well. Type, I'm naming it as VM002. Okay, VM. Here also I am only opening 22. No other ports are opened. I'm going with HDD. I'm selecting server subnet. I'll also create another IP as well. Public IP server 2. Basic same. Whatever we did, same we are attaching, same we are doing for this thing as well. Great, this VM is deployed. This is creating. Validation is done. VM server server two. And this is in server subnet, which means the same subnet that we are looking into. We are attaching a public IP as well. Great. Meanwhile, I'll be connecting to this. I'm taking this public IP. Okay, I'm trying to connect with the help of SSH. Since we opened to port 22, then we will be able to take SSH from here. SSH, username at the right. IP, yeah. So, sir, uh, for for RDP, like we used to go with the remote desktop, something, right? Yeah, but, but for, yeah, uh, but this is this is Linux server now. That's why we yeah, are taking so, SSH. Yeah. So, I mean, what should we type in the search bar for getting this? Uh, uh, I mean, the page, this page. Yeah, it is like you need to just go to CMD. Command, oh, CMD. Command, okay, yeah, command, CMD. command prompt, okay. Yeah, command prompt. I'm using, uh, this is a WSL Linux one. Yeah, either should be fine, no issues on that. Okay. okay. Because uh, either it will work. So SSH, username at the rate, IP. And uh, it will, yes, it will ask the password. Just input the password, then click enter. Okay, now I am in VM server one. Okay, VM server one. Perfect. Yes, sir. Okay. Next step, what I will do is, there is a server called Nginx. Okay, Nginx. Uh,
actually this is a free uh, open source server which is available so we can call it as engine x okay engine x so it is like a web server so it's it's free so that we can uh, just configure that very easily okay so only two commands we need to configure so i'll configure it here it's a web server we converted that uh, windows server to web server right with the help of ias yes. so yeah same as that we, we are promoting this vm as a web server okay okay so we we need few commands one is sudo apt update this is for updating the package of this vm okay so we just run it so it will load all things what all packages needed to be installed it will ch check and uh, it will update okay all packages packages are up to date then we need to install this nginx so there is another command like sudo apt install nginx okay this is how we will install different packages or different uh, programs so we can mention python instead of nginx to install python for example so here we are using nginx okay okay I'm clicking enter so it will read and it will ask do you want to continue yeah we need to click y yes it is reading databases it will be installing So it is processing, yeah, and it is available. So now actually that Nginx is installed, okay? So we can, uh, as same as the web server that we have created with the help of IAS server. So what we can do is we can just open this and uh, we can just paste it that uh, public IP over here. Okay. Okay, let's check if it is working or not. Meanwhile, I'll go to other VM as well. Okay. And I'll do the same thing. I'm creating, a, I'm using another command, sorry, command prompt, SSH. Okay. Do remember these commands as a search, username, at the rate, IP. You can mention what, like, you can mention your username. username as well. I'm using this, that's why I'm putting it. And, uh, this. It's asking for password. Let me pull in that password. Okay, I'm in VM Server 2. Now I need to install Nginx. Same steps. Should I put the update? This sudo is for like root permission, which means it will be the administrator level permission. That's why sudo is we are using. Now I'll install Nginx here. Okay, so that's also installed. So now we have two servers, which is installed, which is Nginx installed. So two servers we have, full, great. And uh, yeah, let me try to put this public IP of the second VM as well, second server as well. 
Okay, here we are getting this side can be reached, okay, for the first machine. And for the second machine, yeah, yeah let, let's wait for the response. Meanwhile, I'll explain what is happening here. Okay. So let's check the network security group of this. Yeah, here also we are getting this side can be rich, which means, yeah, something, some kind of issues are there. We need to troubleshoot it, okay? So let's go to the networking tab. This is server one. This networking tab, yeah, I'm checking this network security group, which is associated with this VM, okay? So, oh, here, so, it just created, hmm. so it just created by default? Yeah, like we selected basic no there. So that's why it is created. If we selected none, then it will not okay. create. Okay, got it? Yeah, in my case, yeah, in my case, I was selecting no, no. that's why it Yeah, was that's created. why it is not created, yeah. Okay. If you haven't created it by whenever you are creating a VM, then definitely you can create, you can search it for network security group or NSG, and you can create it from here. Okay, I have okay, to okay. because okay. I, yeah, but we can, we can create as well. Okay, we can okay. and create it like this also. So okay. that's, that's not our topic for now. That's, so I'm just jumping to this. Okay, so VM server one, then networking settings, network settings. Just to verify, okay, this is the NIC card which is attached and this is the network security group that is attached to this NIC card. So what it is showing, okay, it is allowing, it is allowing 22 port, right? As such, it is allowing. And yes. these NGINX servers, okay, this NGINX servers by default will expose the application to port 80, okay? HTTP. Yeah, HTTP, exactly. Okay, so port 80 will be listening and uh, here we have only port 22. That's why we are not able to get this. So what we need to do, okay. we can, yeah, we need to add a rule. Okay, one inbound rule we need to add that mentioning, okay, source is any, destination is also any, service is HTTP. So it will be selected by port IT by default, priority is done, then click on add. Okay, I'm adding, I'm allowing port, uh, port 80. Okay, that's what I'm doing. So I'm adding that rule. So here what happened? Yeah, port 80 is enabled. It is allowed, right? From any source to any destinations, which is in scope of this network, uh, NIC card, that is allowed which means this has to come. This is VM1, so this is the IP of the VM1, right? So this has to be available. See, welcome right. engine exit is available, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's why this is, this is how we need to allow traffic. Okay. Earlier, we so didn't allow port ID. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's NG, uh, I mean, NSG2. So we just uh, allow like uh, port Yeah, add one rule. Yeah, whatever rule we have, we need to add. So if it is HTTPS, it is listening to port, port, port 443. So we need to allow 443. That's it. Yes, sir. It's like that. Yeah, now got it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, same way, what we need to do here, here also we are getting that issue, right? So we need to go for network settings.
So here we need to create another rule. So show any 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 HTTP add. So it will create a rule which says, okay, allow AT port also. So what will do? It will start allowing and it will be reflecting like that a few minutes, few seconds or a minute it will take to reflect that change. Then it will come over here. And uh, meanwhile, I'll do one thing. Yeah, this is server one. So there is one thing. I need to go to a location, okay. So CD is the same, change directory. I'm going to a directory. So LS is to list the file, uh, list the folders here. So I need to go to this or folder because uh, Nginx will be uh, creating one directory and uh, there is one file inside that. That's why we are getting that and uh, Nginx. So let me go to that. CD change directory war. There is one WW folder inside that. And there is one HTML folder as well. So I will go to this. And I will ls means list all the files. Okay, I have this file. So what I will do, right? I'll edit this file. I'll edit this. Sudo okay. is an editor. Index.html. Okay. I do have some code with me, so I will paste it over here. So I'm updating it. Okay, I just updated the code over here. So this is completely the next part, but uh, yeah, if you, yeah, I'll give you those like uh, code and also that you can try it with as, as well. So once that code is updated, I'll do one thing. I'll restart the, the Nginx server. So there is another command which is sudo service nginx restart to restart the server, okay? Because I updated that file. So that's why I restarted it. Earlier it was like this, right? Welcome to nginx, like this. So I'm just, I just, yeah. this is an index file. So I just change it. It's basically HTML file itself. Okay, whatever HTML file you will mention here, it will come over there. See, here we are getting another page, right? Because this is the page that I configured over there. Okay, so by putting that all command, you already you actually can configure this all. Yeah, correct, correct. Same okay. way I'll do, I'll do here also. So CD, then CD slash CD word, www, HTML, yeah, unless, yeah, we have this file in place. What I will do, right? I'll sudo vim. Vim is an editor, actually. If you need for, there will be some commands that we are using to manage this with the help of vim. So let me take it.
see what I will do, right? I'll test this. Then I'll I'll restart the server. Same steps. Now changes. Same steps. Restart. Okay, this is the second one. Okay, so this is server two and this is server one, okay? Okay. So I have, ideally I have two servers which is available and uh, one is this and uh, one is this. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'll be bringing what this one. Dot Your balancer. balancer. Right. I'll be creating a lot. Yeah. I'll be using a load balancer. So yeah, for that. First of all, what I'm doing is yeah, I have public IPs, right? I created two public IPs for two servers, right? So I'll be detaching that. Okay, from the servers. I'll de associate. Yes. And also disassociate from this as well. So both servers. Uh, why are we disassociating? Um, uh, means why are we uh, disassociating? Yeah, yeah, because because yeah, uh, I'm why because here I'm bringing load balancer, no, so I don't need direct access to this. So that's okay, why okay. I am removing removing these IPs. Okay, so is it like load balancers doesn't work uh, on the uh, uh, Created public IPs virtual machines. Yeah, the, the idea is to load okay. balance the request between these. No, so if we have yeah. public IP, then there is no need of a load balancer, right? Because okay. this is a public load balancer, we need to like add these two servers yeah. as backend of this load balancer, and we need to provide one public IP so okay. that load balancing will work and it will. Work internally. Okay, got it. Okay, cool. So, yeah, both are disassociated. If I run it once again, I, I will get some errors definitely. Yeah, let's wait for that. We don't need to wait for that. Yeah, that will not because it is not uh, available. Then, uh, what we will do, right? We will use any of these IPs for the public uh, load balancer. Okay. So for now, I'll be creating a load balancer. Okay, both service we are getting said can be reached because we have disassociated those public IPs. Creating load balancer, uh, this thing, public load balancer. So, Zero zero one is It is standard one, and we have public one, right? Because our dot balancer is facing public, so it's public one, and it is regional. We do, will not go for global, you know. Next is we need to configure front end IP. Front end IP means for which IP we are using to access this uh, load balancer. Okay. So I need to add a front end IP, which is called a public IP. So I will do one thing. I'll name it as public uh, IP server public. And I'll select an IP. Okay, there are two IPs, right? Two public IPs, public server one and server two. Yeah, I'll put server one, okay? Anyone is fine, but I'm now I'm just going with server one. Then, yeah, I don't have any gateway load balancer, then save. 
So, so that IP, um, I mean, we are, we are, we are actually like this associated. We already... Yeah, we are using this IP. Yeah, we already associated that IP with the, those VMs. But we, we deassociated it. So now it's vacant, like it's free. So we can consume it to any other service resources. So I am using that to the public load balancer. So we can access load balancer with the help of this IP. Okay. And uh, back and pool, I'm adding. Back and pool is something like, what's the, what are the targeted machine that we, been, we want to access? Okay. So pool, back and pool. Servers, I will mention. Okay, I'll select the virtual network. This is the virtual network that we have. Either I can go with NIC or IP address. That's fine. I'll click add. Yeah, two servers, right? We have two servers. One, two. I'm adding that. So these two machines are added as backend. So Using that public IP, if we are trying to access, we will get responses either from one or two. Okay. Now, yeah, we need to add a load balancing rule, which means how that uh, port is to be like, how that rule has to be happened. That's what. So it'll be. Inbound. Okay, one rule I'm giving. It is IP for IPv4 itself. Front end IP is what? Public. That public IP, right? That we have already associated. Okay, I'm selecting that. Back and pull. Yeah, back and pull service. I added two servers, so I'm selecting that. Protocol is TCP port. This are listening to which port actually? 80, right? 80. Both applications are 80. Yeah. So I'm just mentioning AT over here. And here also, yeah, back and port means from which port they are getting that uh, values. Because yeah, if you mention 80. port 80 here, yeah, port 80 here, yeah, uh, port 80 will be opened for that IP that we have associated. And back and port is also 80, right? Because both applications are exposed listening to port 80. And this is a health probe. Health probe is something like it will periodically check, periodically check whether that uh, server is available or not, like the backend service. Okay. So that's what uh, we are creating a health probe. It is for an internal purpose only, actually. And then session persistence, that's fine. Timeout, enable TCP Richard. Okay. Okay. This is fine. Okay, so mainly the idea is from which port to which port it is giving. So port 80 to port 80 itself because our applications are listening to port 80, that's right. Save. That's fine. Outbound role. We need to add a response like a road here. So outbound role. Front end IP. Yeah, definitely this one. Back and pool, yeah, I need to only traffic, yeah, TCP traffic only. I don't need to go to UDP. Server, okay, two servers we have. Manually choose a number of outbound ports, ports per maximum, number of backend instance. I just mentioned two here because I do have two instances in back and that's why. Okay. It, that I mean two servers. Yeah, two servers. I have two servers, no? I added yeah. two servers as back and that's why. Yeah. Okay. Give me a grid. Get the manual Okay, validation passed, create.
It's created. It's waiting. This is the first public IP. This is the second one. Let's wait for some time. See, here now, both the public IPs are same, right? Yeah, both the same. Yeah, same IP that we provided now, that pub first public yeah, IP. Because, yeah, because yeah, we, we provided the same IP, uh, hmm. server one IP. Yes, yes, yes. So we can go for another IP as well, but we already have two vacant IPs, so that I selected one. Created. See, I'm getting this right. Server one, I am getting here. Hard to get server to focus the load balancing. General load balancing, yeah. But we will do one thing. Okay, if you have your phone or something or your uh, laptop or something, just try to give this IP, it will give you this page. Just check it out. Make sure it is HTTP, not HTTPS, okay? Okay, sir. The load balancing will be working with the help of some kind of algorithms internally so that uh, so the basic idea is if we have similar kind of web servers then we can host in different areas for example one in this area and one, one another in a different region and then we can have something like if some outage or something happen in for a region we can bring this kind of solutions, but there we need a global load balancer, I think. so like that. Yes, sir, I, I can able to open this page. Yeah, you can see you can see this, right? You are getting this. Are you getting this actually? You're on mute actually. Yeah, um, sorry sir. Yeah, I was on mute. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tried to open it, but um, it's not letting me open. Yeah, uh, you can access it by your, uh, like any browser smartphone or some something else. Okay, just what, yeah, that's what I said. Mention HTTP colon hyphen hyphen. Sorry, slash slash. This is how we need to because it is HTTP. While we searching on this thing, right? Uh, web browser, they will automatically take HTTP as first. That's why you are not getting that. Okay, okay. Yeah, yes. that, may, that might yeah. be a, that might be a case, I guess. Yeah, HTTP colon. So, sir, why, why aren't we able to open the uh, server 2? 
uh, because we have the same IP address for both servers. I guess. That, that is why. Yeah, that's an internal uh, load balancing technology that is happening inside load balancer. Okay, so mainly, uh, yeah, I'll why I put server one and server two is to identify which which request we are getting. Okay. And I'll I'll show you what the practical practicality of this concept. For example, if we are getting what okay server one here right. Let's say example uh, in some reason this servers go down. Okay, VM server goes down. I'm taking it as stopping it because let's see some. Failure happened. Take it like that. So VM server one, some failure happened. And uh, yeah, we'll try to access it once again. See, we are getting. Yes, we are getting server two. Server two, right? So which means the yeah. service is not like uh, going outage and all. Even the backend, one of the backend server is down, we are getting result, correct? Yeah. Yeah, this is the idea. This is the thing that we need to understand. So, so it's like the ser uh, sorry, server one was from the virtual machine one and server two was in virtual machine two. So let's say if something happens with the uh, uh, virtual machine one, then virtual machine two is, two will serve. Uh, I mean, Okay, okay. Yeah, it's like that. So I just put server one and two because it is easy to understand. Otherwise, how we can understand from where it is getting, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, so it is like that. And for example, then I'll start this one second. Okay, now it is stopped. And after some time, it came back. Okay. After some time, it came back. And uh, ideally, this will be two similar services, but as you know, to understand, I put server one and server two. And uh, yeah, I just started. it. Okay, it is starting. And uh, what happens, right? Uh, my this thing. Server two face some issues. Okay, it goes down. So, so let's say if in, if in some cases like uh, we encounter that uh, some server is kind of down. So, is this because um, there there is like um, um, less availability of virtual machines? Maybe due to that, or maybe some hardware issues. All are this oh. like in data centers, right? There may be some yeah. region outages, issues with the data centers. Something like that may happen. Yeah, now we are getting yeah. server one right now. Because in general, we faces like this this kind of issues in uh, banks, like mostly in central banks. Hmm. What, where? Like in mostly in central banks. Okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like uh, that's why like we will be it is kind of increasing the uh, uh, like we can do this to increase the availability of the application as well as if we need to convert something like some load balancing to because uh, we will have yeah here we have two right we may think about ten ten service we have in backend and if we are Facing issues in different areas also, like it will be getting the service. That's what the website will be up, correct? So that's what we are expecting. That's that's actually that uh, idea. Hmm? So, and each virtual and each virtual machine uh, would would handle like each server, right? I mean, um, like yeah, separate server. Yeah, separate server. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So if if we don't have the server one or server two thing here, we can't identify. That's why I put this. 
otherwise you will not identify from which server we are getting that so even if yeah. one server goes down our website will be upcurrent yes because it is to the same ip and uh, yeah i'll do one thing also yeah this is the ip right uh, where is the ip let me go to that ip and then ip configuration so okay this one okay i'll go to that public ip this ip one more thing is there we can configure a dns name as well instead of this ip okay for example server is available i'll save it See here also we are getting now full scores dot. We can assign a DNS name as well, which means instead of IP, we can mention guruscoles.us.cloudup.ashwara.com so that we can access that as well. Okay. So it's like assigning that uh, this thing. A DNS. DNS means domain name system. We can assign names as well. Okay. So I hope all those things are like your doubts are cleared now. Yes, sir. So far, no doubts. Um, um, all doubts got cleared. But um, sir, I have faced one issue. Like, um, mostly like um, um. We have uh, work with Linux and uh, Windows 10, right? Um, mm. But um, I mean, in a few cases, like I have chosen Windows 10 Pro, and like there was also an option for Windows 11. But in that case, sir, I, I wasn't able to um, uh, open the, the server manager thing, you know? So I couldn't able to uh, change the mm. yeah, uh, web yeah. server, I mean, update mm. the web server. Okay. Because so, in general, like in Windows 10, uh, the page pop-ups, right? Uh, the, the server manager page pop-ups. So uh, actually, actually, yeah, that is actually there are different kind of servers, which means Windows 10, 11, uh, Windows 8, all are actually standalone kind of thing. So it is for, not for server purpose. It is only for like our purpose. Okay. Basic individual purpose. We have server images, which means Windows Server 2019, Windows Server 2022, Windows Server 2016, like that, okay. If we need to go with a Windows Server, like if we need to like uh, create one web server, it is better to go with the server edition, okay, not with the Windows okay. 10 or 11 or 8, okay. So you must choose any any uh, images that uh, comes with server. I'll show you. See, okay. here we have Windows Server 2016-19-22, right? This you need to select. If you select with the 10 Pro, 11 Pro, something, right? You can configure, yeah, I but so. you need uh, more steps, okay? But in server, it is easy to configure because it itself have like it's it's for servers actually so we can directly uh like uh, onboard it as a web server but if we are taking windows 10 11 and all those kind of things then we need to install the utilities that which converts this windows 10 to a server then we need to bring it as a web server do you got me okay yeah because 
It's just a basic OS, not the server one. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, then. So that's it. I hope this gives you some more idea on yeah. the doubts up here. Yeah. So, oh, one second. Thank you so much. All dots got cleared. You know, so far, yeah, no doubt. Great, great. Yeah, great, great. Yeah, yeah I'll be uh, like uh, this session will be um, shared later. Okay. Okay. Recording will be available. Okay. So, yeah, that's my intent that to uh, saw your doubts and all. So, yeah, that's fine. All good. Oh, okay, sir.